In this video, we're looking at cable clipping distances and if you should clip cables like this. So is there a set distance for how far apart cable clips and supports should be when supporting cables? On site, you'll probably hear the same rule of thumb. Clips at a hammer length apart, or if you work in the TV or fiber optic industry, it might be six feet apart. But none of that appears in the wiring regulations. So where do the real numbers come from? Well, they're tucked away in the on-site guide and they might not be what you expect. And while we're at it, what about fire rated clips? Do we actually need to fit metal fixings everywhere, even in lofts and above plasterboard ceilings. We're going to get to that part later on. So let's talk about how most of us actually clip cables. When you're on site, it's tempting to use whatever's in your hand. Hammer the clip in, hammer length, hammer the clip in. But that's not really a spacing, it's just a rule of thumb. And what happens if your hammers are different lengths? And with systems like the Viper Clip, it works out at 200 millimeters between clips. You fire in your first clip, then you back the Viper Clip onto that clip, fire it again, and that works out at 200 millimeters. To me, they look really close together, but do they have to be? Is it regulation or just good habits? To find this out, we need to go to the source, and that is Appendix D of the on-site guide. This section sets out the maximum clip spacings for cables in accessible areas, and it doesn't work on what many people assume, including myself, which is the cable cross-sectional area, but the cable diameter. Let me explain. So for twin and earth cable, that measurement is taken across its major axis. Axis. Let's break this down into real world examples. One millimeter squared twin and earth, most often used for lighting circuits, and it's about seven millimeters across. Table D1 puts that in the up to nine millimeter band. So 250 millimeter horizontal and 400 millimeter vertical spacings. Because it's flexible, it needs closer support to stop sagging or pulling on terminations. 2.5 millimeter twin and earth, the workhorse for sockets and small power circuits, well, that's about 10 millimeter wide and that's sitting in the 9 to 15 millimeter band. The spacing for this is 300 millimeters horizontal and 400 millimeters vertical. It's more rigid than one millimeter squared cable so it holds its shape better so the table allows for wider spacing. 6 mm square twin and earth cable is used for small showers or cookers and it's about 30 mm across. It's still in the 9 to 15 mm band so the spacing is 300 mm horizontal and 400 mm vertical. Now you may expect that the spacings would tighten with size but it doesn't. Rigidity means the cable is better at supporting itself. 10 mm square twin and earth cable which is common for induction hobs and larger cookers is about 17 mm wide. So now we're in the 15 to 20 millimeter band. The spacing for this is 350 millimeters horizontal and 450 millimeters vertical. This size of cable is so stiff it can easily bridge wider gaps. Bit of armored, mate. <laughs> Six millimeter squared steel wide armored is around 15 millimeters diameter. And the spacing for this is 350 millimeters horizontal and 450 millimeters vertical. The steel armor gives it its mechanical strength so it can be supported further apart. A 2.5 millimeter squared MICC cable, about 7.5 millimeter wide, has a spacing of 600 millimeters horizontal and 800 millimeters vertical. The clip spacings for MICC can be further apart because the cable is rigid and is able to support itself. And if you wanna keep those numbers handy, along with a load of other common cable types that you might use in industry, perfect for electricians, lecturers, colleges and training providers, I've created a free downloadable chart. I've left links in the description so you can get yours. So what can we take from this? Well, the tougher and more rigid the cable, the more you are allowed by the table to space your clipping distances. Flexible cables will need more support and closer together. Rigid or armored cable can have their spacings further apart. But here's a point that, like me, lots of people miss. These clip spacings only apply in accessible areas. If your cable is being clipped along a wall or a joist which is going to be an accessible position, then those spacings are correct. But if it's in a floor space, above a ceiling, behind plasterboard, then that's not an accessible position. So those clip spacings don't actually matter. 
and table D1 doesn't apply. But that doesn't mean you can leave your cables unsupported. Our cables will still need supporting to prevent strain, sagging and premature collapse in a fire. But the difference is once it's in an inaccessible position then that comes down to the electrician's engineering judgment to how far apart they space their clips. So whilst clipping the cables using the Viper clip I'm not doing them at every 200 millimeters. I'm doing them at roughly four to 500 millimeters. That doesn't mean I'm using less clips so it's costing me less and I'm still complying with the regulations. So with that being the technical side in practice what's your thoughts? How far apart roughly do you clip your cables? Do you even think about it? And whilst we're on about support let's circle back to fire rated clips and if we should use them and where we should use them. So there is a regulation that supports this. 521.10.202. Wiring systems should be supported such that they will not be liable to premature collapse in the event of a fire. If cables do collapse in the event of a fire, they can block escape routes and even entangle firefighters, something which happened in the Shirley Towers tragedy. So I've referred to the Beamer guidance for fire rated fixings and where to put them. And it says that fire rated fixings are needed anywhere cables could fall into escape routes, which includes corridors, stairwells, lobbies, and anywhere people might pass through during an evacuation. It also says that cables should not be within 150 millimeters of a doorway or 300 millimeters above a doorway unless it has been fixed with metallic fixings. It also says that cables should not be fixed to false or suspended suspended ceilings, even if they're fire rated. The guide also lays out that the risk of entanglement doesn't apply to cables which are under a floor. So this is great and makes perfect sense for commercial buildings, but here's where I'd like your thoughts. The Beamer guidance doesn't specifically mention domestic dwellings. So should we treat a plasterboard ceiling in a domestic property the same that we would treat a false or suspended ceiling in a commercial installation? Should we be using metal clips above these patio doors? Because this may be a point of escape in the event of a fire. I've started using these CBO2s from Cable Boss to support my cables. They meet the requirements to avoid premature collapse in the event of a fire and the spacings are 450 millimeters apart because that's the spacing of the rafters and the edges are rounded so it's not going to cause snagging on the insulation. Let me know what you think in the comments. So maybe a hammer length between clips isn't the problem it's just knowing when good engineering decisions need to be made. Although I can't remember the last time I used a hammer because I love this Viper clip so much and it's made doing first fix in so much faster. Be sure to keep an eye out for the next video dropping soon where we're looking at cable zoning in kitchens and answering the question about the 150 millimeter gap in the corner of the room. Is that space for the electrician, the plumber or the convenient spot for the joiner to hang his wall units? And if you've got a burning electrical question that you want me to answer, then email it to me at willittrip at efix.co.uk.